us all pray together. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, we thank you for the example, the faith of Ricardo. We thank you for the peace that he has given to his family and to us as a congregation. We thank you for his battle of faith that he demonstrated his love for Jesus. We thank you, dear Father, that he encouraged others through his illness. We thank you for the life of a faithful son of yours, a faithful servant, a colleague. We thank you, dear Lord. And it is out of his example, it is out of his faith that we today in this difficult moment have the ability to praise our great God, to praise the God that Ricardo loved, the God that he served unconditionally. We receive encouragement, strength from above to praise you in these very, very difficult moments. We have nowhere else to turn, Father. Ricardo turned to you and we want to do the same today. You deliver us from our pain, our grief, our concerns. You give us strength beyond the human strength, our understanding of capacity to carry grief. You give us so much more than what we can ever place before you in our words. And so we humbly ask you, dear Lord, please continue to be in our midst. Continue to strengthen Melissa, Riley, and Madison, the extended family, the priestly body, everyone that weeps and mourn. Please strengthen them with your power, with your love, that only you can give holistic care we depend on you, dear Father. For a moment, we think about Ricardo. We know and believe he's also present in the spirit. We know that he is also in need of the comfort his family and congregation will receive this morning. But we also know that he has already, since his passing, experienced faith that he believed his entire life. He's experienced the next step in the plan of salvation and that plan brings joy to his heart. And while we grieve today, we ask you kindly that we can experience a moment of his joy, his love, his new understanding of the will and plan of God, that we are strengthened by his faith because we know that he believed, he trusted in his father, and that allowed him to battle his illness dear father with dignity and with great strength and culminated in peace in his heart so father bless us now as we go into your word of strength we ask all of this in the name of our lord jesus christ amen, amen. dear melissa dear madison dear riley dear extended Thibodeau family firstly as the leaders in the congregation, God's servants and the congregation, and I'm sure this is not everyone, many join virtually today. We extend our sincere condolences to you and assure you that in your time that lies ahead, we will continue to support you, to love you, and we give you that assurance today that we are there for you in this tough time. As the basis for this funeral divine service of Ricardo Kibido. I read the book of, out of the book of Daniel, chapter 4, I read a portion of verse 34. And at the end of the time, I lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives forever. Lieber Bruce and sisters, Lieve bedroefde familie, ons woord vir vanochtendse godsdienst, Daniel 4, ek lees een gedeelte van die vers 34. En na verloop van tyd het ek 
my oe na die jimmel opgeslaan, en my verstand het in my teruggekeer, en ek het die allerhoogste geloof, en hom wat ewig lewe geprys en geëer soek. Thank you very much, dear choir. Dear Melissa, Madison and Riley, once again do I embrace you with the love of the Lord this morning. To you and your extended family and all the respected mourners and everyone that has come to pay tribute to Ricardo this morning, we truly embrace you. And as you can see and know that the life of Ricardo his life has touched so many. I will go through in a few moments some tributes that have been given to us. And dear children, dear Melissa, know that Ricardo's life was never in vain. He touched people. He brought people to God. And now in his death also, in his suffering, in his death, he touched so many in the dignified way he suffered and he went through this. I, in a recent divine service, I referred to a word in Ecclesiastes where it says, a good name, a good life, an example is greater than fine ointment. Ointment that is supposed to heal, ointment that's supposed to bring comfort. It says a good name is greater than that. And always know that your dad lived a good life. He believed in God. He trusted in God. And it results in this faith and legacy that he now leaves with, with you as a family. We do know 
that death is probably one of the most painful experiences that mankind can go through. And with death comes also remembrance of his life, but also special occasions. Yesterday, for those that do not know, was Melissa's birthday. And I chatted to her and I said, Melissa, you know, this is the first of many occasions. And she said to me, no, Mother's Day was last Sunday. So these occasions will come when we will remember him but his absence. But the Lord fills the void. And that is what grief does, dear family, dear brothers and sisters. Grief <coughs> elevates the absence of God. But it is not God's absence. It is grief that comes and almost displays that where is God? Why did he allow it? But we know as believers that God is with you. There's a beautiful verse in the Psalms. Psalm 145, the verse 14, it says, The Lord upholds all and raises up all who are bowed down. Everyone that weeps, everyone that mourns, God is there to comfort them. When one goes back into the scripture and you look into the life of Abram, Abram was asked to sacrifice his son. And you can just imagine it must have been a trying time and it was only faith that delivered him to the point of sacrificing his son. And then the God who was present, God, who loved Abram and respected his faith, intervened and helped. And then as you go into the scripture, you see an elevation of God's empathy towards mankind, where he says, I will help all. When Jesus stood by Mary and Martha, and they had suffered because of the loss of their brother, it says Jesus never answered the questions. He answered them by shedding a tear, demonstrating that he loves. And sometimes people say, where is God? And we forget that God sacrificed his own son. He loved his son and he allowed his son to die. And he knows our grief. He knows our pain. And Melissa, Madison and Riley, this God says, I will comfort all. I will comfort all that mourn. All that are going through tough times. And now God assures you today that while it may seem that grief elevates the distance to God, elevates God's absence, he will comfort you and be there with you. So the family have asked that there's no obituary today, but they provided some tributes. And it gives me great Pleasure to read a few of the tributes that have been given to me. And if it's okay, Melissa, can I start with last in, first out? I want to end with you. Is that okay? I start with that which I received from the, his employer, the city of Cape Town, a Mr. Heindry Paper. He says, we will always remember him as a God-fearing and vibrant person. And we thank the Lord, our Savior, that we had the privilege to know and work alongside him. Just in one sentence, what a tribute. Ricardo commenced his service with electricity directorate on 1 November 2002 as a worker. And by means of training, studying, and hard work, he climbed the ranks to become a qualified artisan and then later senior artisan a designation and position that he held until he died on 10 May 2023. He had served the city of Cape Town a total of 20 years and five months. Although Ricardo's work was technical, it entailed him having to go out into the field on a daily basis and would require him to engage and interact with people, mostly strangers such as customers, contractors, officials, and other departments and sectors 
also counselors. I think this must have been a tough one. The counselors and senior officials, the list is endless. The city was working for us. <laughs> The risks to life and limb for himself and his colleagues was at times also quite high. With respect to after hour nighttime work, going into areas that suffered community protests and gang related activities. But this did not frighten Ricardo. We will speak a little bit about that later in the service. He was an effective leader and mentor because he knew his work and was blessed with the skill of effective communication, a humble demeanor, and could remain calm under pressure. And he just loved what he did to serve members of the public. Through his dedication to duty, he earned and had re the respect and support of his colleagues and senior staff members from various sections within the directorate at which he served and provided a service to. Ricardo, we, your work family, will hugely miss you. Rest in peace, dear colleague and friend. And although we say farewell to you today, we look forward to the day that we will meet you again. That comes from the city. I have a little note here from your previous rector. He wrote me a note and touched my heart, and I thought I will read some extracts. It says, I remember Ricardo as the ever-smiling brother. That's how I see Ricardo who greeted me when becoming the rector of Windsor Park. He was always at the door at every activity and was never just him alone. His wife, his daughter and son. Everyone in the family would clean the church and often I'd find them there on a Friday night all alone cleaning God's house as a family. He'd phone me for anything and everything, always with the purpose that I must remember him in prayer for what? He's about to do, buying a house, deciding on a project, you name it. His leader had to pray for him. I remember searching for him on MIS and discovered him not being a deacon anymore. So we, everybody thought he was a deacon in the congregation, but there was a little a glimpse, a glimpse on, on MIS. And the rector writes, I arranged to have him ordained in the Santa Kral. To the congregation, he was always their deacon, and he, we are thankful that the Lord called him to be ordained in Windsor Park for the congregation. He was a missionary at heart and used to arrange the congregation trips to Kamishkru and Norifi and Kamasis, helping his neighbor was his life. He never grumbled, never moaned, and always thankful. Even in this little administrative slip up, he never moaned, he never uh, uh, was angry. And that was so beautiful about your husband. And then I come to his mom, Mark, Michelle, MJ, and Matthew, Melissa's brother and family, says, Ricky, you led a life filled with joy, found in a loving family, many friendships in Christ. You gave freely of yourself and your time to anyone and everyone needing help, a chat or a hug, always mindful of everyone. Your heart was so big and your smile was bright. God decided he needed your light. And then they conclude, gone too soon. And then I have a note here from Roy, Vanessa, Lionel, Carl, Savashni, Denisha, and Skyler, Ricardo's sister and family. I'm sitting in the plane thinking how to one say goodbye to someone you love. You ask me if I'm coming in the month of May not knowing I'm coming to say goodbye. Ricardo, Cardo, Ricky, Uum. I found the Uum interesting because he's a young man. You had many names, but you had the quality of a special baby brother. Can still be a baby at times, but when it came to family, you were our number one go-to person. I miss our phone calls, video calls. They were special. You will always be in our heart. My family is going to miss you. You promised to come for a holiday in Durban. God had other plans for you. You have achieved so much in your short life. You are now our fourth angel who is no more. And then his friend Elroy, I read just little extracts. I remember the day when my wife and I were introduced in the congregation and placed in the section of the deacon Ricardo Kibido. 
Ricky and I immediately got along like a house on fire on a spiritual and natural level. He taught me how to really love God's children. Ricky always saw the good in people, even if they worked on his last nerve. <laughs> and then I go to one of his other friends, Nizam. To me, Ricky was an instrument of peace and love who unveiled my hidden gift to serve others. For this, I remain truly grateful. He loved getting together to socialize, which he called fellowship. We were joined by the heap in teasing others and had good fun making those surrounded by him feel loved. Ricky was a true role model and an ambassador of Christ who loved to serve others and always put others' needs before his own. And then we go to Riley. Dear Dad, it's never easy to say goodbye, but here goes. It really broke my heart when you passed away. I really miss you. Every time I'm alone, I always think of those special memories, and those memories will always make me smile. Although we had our ups and downs, my love for you will never change. You really knew how to make others smile, and your kind disposition always shined through. Dad, I will miss all the times we used to argue before church, even this one when you said, Riley, you need to look decent. You are not going to a jaw. That's what he says. <laughs> Take that off and put your suit on. Remember, you are a priest child and you need to look decent. Eh? I often wonder in most Christian homes, I think the most fights take place on a Sunday morning before church. And yeah, a typical family. Now that you're no longer with us naturally, I will always feel good and proud when wearing my suit. In conclusion, I would just like to say, since you went into the beyond, I've never heard a laugh like yours, and I've never seen a smile like yours, and I truly miss hearing and seeing them. I love you to the moon and back. How lucky I am to have had a father so special that I miss you may not be so special that I miss you, may not be with me anymore. My love for you will never die. And then there's something interesting written that I don't quite understand. Riley, we can talk about it later. It says, and don't worry, united. Sometimes glory, glory, man, united. We, we, we need to talk about that afterwards, but here's a message to, to Ricardo. I don't know who he supported, but it seems like there's something there. And then, Madison, we come to you. It says, Maddie, you sign it, Maddie. Dear Daddy, you always made me laugh and smile. You were my inspiration and my dance buddy. You always saw the best in me. You always loved me and said that I was your second wife. Wow! You always took me to Sea Point where we would get ice cream. I'm going to miss those times. You are always in my heart. Love you. Daddo. It's a daddo. Eh? Nice. And now we come to the last one, Melissa. I kept this one for last. It says, to my best friend, my soulmate, my courageous warrior. We're going to talk about that also a little bit later. You fought till the very end. Just do it was our motto. Your journey wasn't always easy, but I'm thankful that I could share every moment and every step with you. Together we got through it. Even when you got diagnosed, you never asked, why me? You always said that God put this on your path for a reason, so that you could help someone else. That I assure you, Melissa, will continue into the future. To say that you were loved and missed would be an understatement. You were loved by so many from the Western Cape to the Northern Cape. You believed in treating all God's children with love and kindness. I will always miss your smile, your voice, your sense of humor, your charm, your wit, and your way of making everything better. You are not my better half. You are my best half because you bring out the best in me. I will always carry you in my heart till we meet again, my love. Rest in peace, your wife, Melissa. While we absorb those tributes, I ask the choir to render an anthem.
so now we come to this word that I've shared with the congregation this morning, the book of Daniel. And Melissa, I want to say to you that in the week I was preparing for this service, looking for a Bible word, and I ended up in Daniel. For no other reason, I thought it's a beautiful word. And then I see your note, my courageous warrior. And then I see the city that works for you saying he went out into the dangerous areas he was not afraid and i think when one look at the life of daniel you see it, the hymn goes dare to bear daniel dare to stand alone and there was a beautiful link and when we see this word it says at the end of time in other words at a certain point of a conclusion in life I realized something. This King Nebuchadnezzar, he says, I looked up and this powerful king that grew the Babylonian empire, that did so much, he conquered many cities and tribes. He came to a realization that he is not greater than God. He's not greater than and he could utter these words. He came to acceptance, but not only acceptance. He came to an understanding that great God is. When I look into the life of Jesus for a moment, you know when we read the gospel, when we see how he went into the garden of Gethsemane, and I think it was those moments that he really struggled. He promised you today as a family and he strengthened Jesus that he could go through this trial and he could hang on the cross and then he uttered those beautiful words. He says, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And while it seems to the reader that it was acceptance of the will of God, I think it was a little bit more than that. It was acceptance, but it was also understanding God's will. Jesus understood that he had to die for the sin of mankind. He had to die so that we one day can meet our loved ones again. That we can be there where Ricardo is. That we can be with the faithful. It was not merely accepting the will. He understood why he had to die. Now we come for a moment to Ricardo. He served the Lord faithfully. He did his best. He was there. If you read the tributes, I just read little portions out of it. He loved God's people. He understood his purpose in life. He did his best to serve. And then he receives this news that I now need to go through a battle of my own. It is a physical battle and a spiritual battle. And now he had to go through this journey of his life. Yes, he said to the rector, don't worry, rector, man. It's just a small little lesion. We'll get, we'll sort it out. I'm there to serve. I don't want to go into leave of absence. I want to serve God. Then there were tough moments and the rector gave me an opportunity to go visit Ricardo and there was this young man and he was really struggling. He had just come out of hospital and then my words to him were very simple. Ricardo, fight this with everything you have in your being. Fight the natural illness but also fight the spiritual illness that could set in and separate from the love of God. And what did Ricardo say in those moments? He says, don't worry, apostle. I will do as you say. He was weak. He was maybe at that moment where he wanted to give up. I think we were concerned, Melissa, that he had given up at that moment. But no, he says... I will fight to the end 
And that is this courageous warrior. He fought to the bitter end. And then, in the moments that we got into the hospital, in the moments that possibly doctors had given up hope, it says he looked up to heaven. He looked to his father and he praised the Lord. He praised the Lord with his peace. He praised the Lord with his faith, exactly how it's written in the scripture here. And that praising God, his faith that he showed and demonstrated to everyone that came to see, he healed the visitors that came. Everyone that saw walked away with peace in their heart. Melissa, today, if you don't mind, I want to share something very interesting. I had the privilege to serve Windsor Park on the day that Ricardo died, the 10th of May. And then the rector during the day, I think it was just about 3 o'clock, he phoned to say Ricardo had passed. And he said, no, but Melissa, Melissa will be there tonight. Madison will be there tonight in Riley. And, and I thought, that doesn't make sense. They've lost the husband. They've lost the father. It's okay to stay at home. It's okay. We justified in our minds that you can stay home. And then I didn't see you at first in the congregation because there were many people here. And then I called the rector to my side and I said, is Melissa really here? And then he said, just look upstairs and you'll see Melissa. And then it touches you. The peace that Ricardo experienced at the conclusion of his life, he saw and he looked to heaven and he saw what God had planned for him. He understood that our continuing city is not here. And he was at peace with what God had allowed. It went beyond acceptance. He understood what God had planned for him. And that brought peace to him. And I want to say, Melissa, brought peace to you. You will never believe what your presence meant to a morning congregation on Wednesday the 10th of May. A morning congregation, your presence alone, and subsequent, your rector says, Melissa doesn't miss a divine service, comes out of the peace that came out of the life of Ricardo. He praised God with his peace. He praised God with his faith. Where does it come from? When one goes into the life of Daniel, there's some beautiful characteristics that allowed him to go through much. Firstly, Daniel lived his faith. The king of the time, Nebuchadnezzar and Darius, had put him one in a fiery furnace, one in a den of lions, and he was tested. It says that those that went to report him said he had broke the commandments. But it wasn't that. He loved his faith. Daniel was brave because of the faith he had in God. And then, secondly, he also confessed his faith in God. He spoke about it to a point that the king, this king, said, to those around him and he said to Daniel I want to read it to you it says your God whom you serve continually will deliver you how did the king know that he had faith how did the king know that he could say those words your God whom you serve continually will deliver you how did he do that it was because Daniel spoke about his faith he told others about God in fact when they came into his upper room, when he was going to be arrested, and Daniel knew that he was going to be arrested, in what position did they find him? Many would be on the run. I think it happened recently in our country. You are on the run. Not Daniel. He was on his knees with his windows open towards Jerusalem, praying to his God. And then... Dear brothers and sisters, Daniel, we use him as an example for a moment. 
it says he did not partake of anything that would break down his faith in God. There was a time the king tried to influence him and he didn't allow it because they offered him something nice. They offered him something to drink, something to eat. And they wanted to break down his resistance. He did not allow that to break him down. And when I look into the life of Ricardo, then I see a Daniel. I see a faith of a Daniel. One in all circumstances, under illness, in whichever way it seems, he served the Lord. That was his faith. And that is the legacy he wants to leave to us as mourners, as family, as colleagues today. That under all circumstances, we want to serve the Lord. And not only serve the Lord. We want to, we want to be able to confess the name of God. We want to be able to say that the gifts and talents I receive to keep standing, to keep praying, to keep serving, to keep being a blessing to others. Melissa, you were such a great blessing to us on that Wednesday night. And still is. That is confessing the name of the Lord. Sometimes without saying a word, you can be an example. And then, like a Daniel, we want to stay away from those things that take us away from the Lord. I mentioned earlier on that grief and death elevates the absence of God. And that spirit runs through our rows, runs through the congregation, runs through our homes, and we do not want to give up on our God. He says, the God that you serve continually will deliver you. When I look at this word continually, it is something special. Melissa, you won't remember, but in COVID, we had many meetings here in Windsor Park. And there was a reason I now know is because they had the top COVID-19 team in place. And who led that team? It was Ricardo, Melissa, and the children. And after the meeting, many were afraid to come out. But here is the modern day Daniel. And after the meeting, then I look at him, wiping the benches down, spraying the benches upstairs and downstairs. He served the Lord continually. And what does the Lord now do to him? He delivers him from this pain and the sorrows of life. He takes him into a new dimension where he will wait for the return of Jesus Christ. He serves continually because he knew in those moments that he looked up. He looked to God for strength. God delivered him and brought about peace in his heart and also in your heart. Also in the heart of the children and into the heart of the congregation. And so his legacy will go on. When we look at this brave Ricardo, we will think about he fought bravely, but he accepted the will of the Lord, but he also understood what the Lord wanted for him. May God bless you, Melissa. May God bless you, dear children and family, that we always remember this man. It says, at the end of time, he looked up to heaven and he understood. And out of his understanding, he praised God and he worshipped his God. Let us continually worship like a Ricardo, like a Daniel. And maybe I say to the congregation today, not dare to be a Daniel. Dare to be a Ricardo. Amen. Amen. The rector is here. He can share a few thoughts and the choir can sing for us, please.
Thank you, choir. Melissa, Riley, Maddie, dear brothers and sisters, dear friends and guests here this morning. It's amazing when you look over the congregation that we all had our personal journey with Ricardo. And how beautiful is it that here this morning we find ourselves in the fellowship with our Heavenly Father. Because Ricardo has touched our lives. And how beautiful this morning, while the Apostle serves us, dear family, I thought, what was the basis of him finding his joy here in God's house? It's very simple. His unconditional love that he had for the Lord and his work. And this love that he had for the Lord and his work was seen in his works of faith. And if I say the works of faith here, dear brothers and sisters, Melissa, you will probably know, he didn't like to stand here on the altar. Hey? You know, when he felt it was getting to that time, it was maybe time for him to get calling up. He would whisper in my ear, Rector, you can pass me this time, eh? Hey? You know, you can ask somebody else. His joy was to go into the homes of God's people. That was his joy. He enjoyed the fellowship of going into the homes of God's people. That is what, dear brothers and sisters, you have messaged me in the week. You have phoned me in the week. He came into your home to pray with you. That was his joy. And you know, we will never know the impact and the difference he made in the life of God's people. Because it was never about Ricardo. It was always about God, our Heavenly Father. Apostle speaks about this leave of absence. That was never on the cards. Honestly, it came now to the end, beginning of April. And he phoned me up and he said to me, Rector, I think it's, it's time that I just take a break. Just a little while. I said to him, well, no problem. I'll take it up with the leaders, but it shouldn't be a problem. He said, but please promise me that you will not delete me from the groups. In other words, dear brothers and sisters, he didn't want to miss out. He wanted to be informed. And if that wasn't enough, dear brothers and sisters, he said something very special to me. He said to me, so that, you know, when I receive a message, I can pray for my, for my fellow priests that are going out into the homes of God's people. That I can pray for God's people. And what did the apostle say this morning? Like that Daniel, he interceded for us. He prayed for us. He prayed for the leadership of the church. So was he really on leave? No. He served the Lord in prayer. That was his joy. That was his strength, dear brothers and sisters. Maybe as a final thought, the rector Pedro said it so beautifully. We know you as a family, Riley, Maddie, Melissa. We know you as a family. The apostle speaks about that, that COVID time. You needed to be first at church to prepare this place, whether it was for meetings, whether it was for divine services, so that God's people can find a safe place to worship God. And you were the last to leave. Preparing the hall again for the next gathering, the next event. And when I think of you as a family, that, that word comes to mind. I'm sure Ricardo is an example of that, although maybe he didn't say it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that was your example to us. Apostle gives us that one word today. I want to encourage you, continue. Continue serving the Lord. Keep your eyes on him fixed on him and he promises that he will grant you the comfort and the strength and that we do not allow anything to separate us from the love of God we are children of hope we are children of the future we have a home in the heavens we find ourselves in the season of Pentecost Jesus Christ has given that promise to us I will come again and I will receive you to myself and as those the believers of Christ we long to meet our bridegroom we long and we are assured when he comes, that we'll have that great reunion with Ricardo. May the Lord bless and strengthen us, dear brothers and sisters. May we continue 
to be that support and pull our strength for Melissa, Riley, and Mary during this time. We know the saying, you know, aftercare in, in service delivery, that's very important. May we continue providing that care and support to them. Amen. Amen. So I'm so thankful for the serving of the rector. Thank you very much for sharing some thoughts with the congregation. Now, brothers and sisters, we come to the conclusion of this funeral divine service. Just one last thought came on my heart while the rector was serving. And, you know, people call it a celebration of life. People call it a legacy. People call it many things. And one always needs to go a little bit further. What is the purpose of a celebration? Purpose of celebrating Ricardo's life today that it can impact us further, that it can bring changes to us. He was not a perfect man. No one is, but it must bring about the changes in us. And then I thought about, and you've heard this example before, and maybe I just use it one more time. It's when one goes to Cape Town Center, and especially if you're not used to being in town, and then you go and work there, and at some point, you're busy there, and there the noon gun goes off. I must admit, I get, there's no better word to say, I get a liquor scruck there. And when that noon gun goes off, there is a reaction. First thing you do, you go to your watch. Even sometimes you're not even wearing a watch, but you go look on your arm. And that is the purpose of death. That is the legacy that we want to celebrate. What do I need to do to be more brave? What do I need to do to be found praying in the sight of circumstances as Daniel was? When the circumstances come, where do they find us? How beautiful when we can say to anything and everything comes our way. Our hearts, our prayers, our faith, like Ricardo, is open towards Jerusalem towards our help, and from our help we receive the strength to continue into the future. So, the rector speaks about aftercare, and once more an encouragement, dear brothers and sisters, please do not forget the family. The time ahead is not going to be easy, but it will be so beautiful when you make that call, when you contact, when you are there, and please remember them into the future. So I now invite the congregation to rise for the internment. I now return the mortal body to the earth with the words, earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, soul and spirit, however, I commend to the love of Jesus Christ, who shall guard over it until the resurrection to eternal life. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. We will now conclude in prayer and the benediction. Almighty God, once again do we come to you with thankfulness in our heart. Thank you for the life of Ricardo. Thank you for his example, his teaching, and that which he stood for. Thank you that we have something, dear Lord, to bring a smile to their face. And as Ricardo did, we also want to do the same, dear Father. Help us and strengthen us in the journey ahead, that we also recognize our God, that we also look to Jerusalem and not only accept the will of God, but accept and understand. May that be our share out of this teaching of the life of Ricardo. And in the coming days, when the tears roll, dear Father, please comfort the family. You have promised us a great and wonderful future that you will wipe away the tears. And you promised us an eternal rest where there's no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow, and very important, no more death. And that is the longing of our soul. Please find us worthy when you do decide to send your son Jesus. May the impulse out of Ricardo's life contribute to our worthiness. That one day soon the promise will be fulfilled. 
the angels told the disciples, why do you gaze up? That same Jesus, the angels spurred them into action. And so we want to also go and wait for Jesus Christ. We look forward to be founding, found worthy. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. a very short word of thanks that comes out of the heart of the family which they've asked me to read. It's headed just simply thank you. We express our heartfelt gratitude to God, our Heavenly Father, for granting us such a loving and caring husband and dad. Ricardo will forever live in our hearts. Thank you to the Kales River Net Care Hospital, doctors, nurses and staff for caring for Ricardo during his time in hospital. Thank you to the colleagues and friends of Ricardo for all your support and care we experience as a family. We are forever grateful for your support. It is out of interest that came to my attention last night that one of his colleagues, when he was in hospital now in the last moments, spent 48 hours at his bedside in a chair. A colleague. And that touched my heart deeply. So to everyone from the city that showed their support and love, everyone, we are thankful. 
Thank you to all the ministers and congregants of Windsor Park for all the care and love you have given to Ricky and us as a family. The loving sympathy you have shown us is forever appreciated. To each and every one as a family, we are humbled and grateful for your support during this time. Your thoughtfulness and kindness is deeply appreciated and is a gift we will always treasure. Thank you very much to everyone, the choir, the orchestra, the organizers of this funeral, the undertakers, we thank you, Ev everyone, without exception, we are grateful as a family. So I invite the Paul Bearers to come forward, and as we leave the hall, the congregation can sing triple four, triple four in the English hymn.
blessed contemplation When with trouble here I sigh There's a home beyond the river That I'll enter by and by I have a home beyond the river I have a mansion bright and fair I have a home beyond the river And I will dwell with Jesus Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> 